Okay, now we're gonna talk about the different gas laws specifically. So the first law that explains behavior of gases and how they move is Boyle's law. So Boyle's law says pressure and volume are, are indirectly uh, proportional to each other. So as one goes up, the other one goes down. So right here in this picture, we have our volume in our gas um, canister decreased. So therefore the pressure of those molecules in a smaller space will be much higher. This explains a lot, one, how we breathe and how that negative pressure is created by our, by our diaphragm. So when we take a big breath of inhalation, our diaphragm drops, our intercostal muscles pull out our thoracic cavity. Therefore, our thoracic cavity gets much larger. And in our thoracic cavity, then, our alveolar pressure is much lower compared to our ambient pressure, the pressure outside of our body. So in that case scenario, that the, the thoracic volume being so much, um, so much larger really pulls gas down in uh, to the alveoli and helps inflate the lungs. So this law explains exactly how we breathe, um, as well as the calculation really shows how when we measure volumes in something called a body plasma plasmographer or a body box. This is how we technically measure a lot of the volumes when we get really specific into pulmonary function testing. So a quick example here in an airtight container which has a volume of 200 milliliters and a pressure of 10 centimeters of water pressure has its volume reduced by 50%. What is the new pressure in the container? So we're looking for the P2, pressure container two. Okay, so when we put in all of our unknown variables to become our known variables, V1 is 200, P1 or pressure one is 10 centimeters of water pressure. If the volume is reduced by 50%, V2 then is 100 milliliters, and then we solve for P2. So P2 then ends up being 10 centimeters of water pressure, which is P1 times V1 divided by V2. And the answer then is 20 centimeters of water pressure. So, and then we have to always ask ourselves, well, does that make sense? Well, we just said, if we decreased the volume, our pressure's gonna go up. So that does make sense. Our next gas law is called Charles Law. So Charles Law says that volume and temperature are directly proportional to each other. So as temperature goes up, so does our volume. Uh, so we have here in this um, example, uh, if we increase the temperature in this um, little closed container here, uh, the volume gets a lot, a bit, lot larger. If I could give you a clinical example of this, or an example that we could think about in everyday life, um, take for example, or think about, if you were to put something in the oven, what does it do? Or when it gets warmer, you could think of bread. Um, you could make an easier thought and think about if you put a balloon in there, believe it or not, if it's not too high, the volume will expand. So when we bake bread, once it gets really hot, uh, it, it expands. So mathematically, we're looking at uh, V, excuse me, we are looking at uh, V1 over two, T1 equals V2 over T2. We're usually solving for V2 in this scenario. So if we say if the temperature of a gas in a three liter balloon is increased from 250 Kelvin to 300 Kelvin, what is the volume of the balloon? Well, if we can remember what Kelvin is, Kelvin is, we'll write it here. Kelvin equals temperature in centigrade plus 273. So the Kelvin scale is always used in uh, usually chemistry or different science equations. So anytime we're doing gas laws, it has to be converted over to Kelvin. So here we go, we have a three liter balloon, so that's our V1, 
our T1 is 250 Kelvin and our T2 is 300 Kelvin. So if we're solving for volume two, we go 300, which is V1 times 300, which is T2 over T1, and that's 250. So if we do the math on that, so if we say three liters times 300 divided by 250, we get 3.6. And once again, we're gonna ask ourselves, does that make sense? Well, thinking about what the equation is, if we increase the temperature, our volume will increase. So 3.6 liters. Finally, the last gas law says that pressure is directly proportional related to temperature. So as temperature goes up, so does pressure. Well, we just experienced this after we had a record breaking high on one day and a low the next day last week. So if we think about that, we might have had our, our car ready to go and our tires pumped up to the appropriate pressure. Uh, then when that um, then when that huge swing, so that real drop by 60, 70 degrees, uh, what happened is, um, at least in my car, my uh, tire light came on, meaning I have a low pressure in my tire. So what it was on one day, which was plenty of uh, pressure, the next day when the temperature dropped was not enough. So I need to get that taken care of or just wait until it warms up again and see if that's enough pressure to sustain. So another example is we have the temperature of a gas in a closed container having a pressure, so P1 of 50 centimeters of water pressure, increase from 275 to 375. What is the resulting pressure? So we're going P1, T2, so 50 times 375 divided by 275, which is T1. So 50 times 375 divided by 275, the answer is 68 centimeters of water pressure. So once again, let's say, does this make sense? We go from 275 to 375 Kelvin. So really the temperature cranks up. So does our volume from 50, 68 centimeters of water pressure. So that does make sense. Next, we're gonna talk about the ideal gas law. Well, the ideal gas law is just taking Boyle's, Charles, and Gay-Lussac's together. The technical one is PV equals NRT. So you might remember that from chemistry class. Well, in respiratory therapy, we do want to condense this equation down to something that um, we can really think about and utilize. So the N stands for number of moles, and we're gonna, we're gonna take that away. R stands for a, a gas constant. And as we said before, a constant doesn't change. So now we're left with P, which is our pressure, V, which is our volume, and T, which is our temperature. So now we're gonna use this called the combined gas law. So the combined gas law, it's also called the ideal gas law, but rewritten for um, clinical application, just says, P1, V1 over T1 equals P2 over V2 over T2. So now let's just, just excuse me, let's do an example of this. So the volume in the body plasma, plasma graph, which is, a, which is a, a big glass box that we sit the patient in, and it's completely sealed so that we know exactly what the pressure inside is, and then we'll measure our volume. So the volume in the body, I'm just going to call it body box for, for ease to say. The volume in the body box is 1,050 milliliters at 27 degrees Celsius dry gas, exerting a pressure of 759. In order to find the volume in the patient's lung, one must correct the machine to BTPS with the pressure reading of 744. So here's the equation we're going to use. So the easiest way to do these equations is, as I have up here, solve for your um, unknown variables. Then we can rearrange the equation to see what we're looking for. 
So what this equation is saying, in order to find the volume in the patient's lung, so we're looking for volume, we already have V1, so we're solving for V2. So in order to uh, change this equation, if we want to isolate V2, we have to get rid of these two variables. So what we do is what we do to one side, we always have to do to the other. So now the new equation is V2 equals P1 V1 T2 over T1 P2. So now let's solve for all these different variables. So we said that V1 is a volume. So I see 1050 milliliters. P1 says 759 millimeters of mercury. Then T1 is 27. So what we do have to do is add that 273 to get this into kelvins. So if we put in our calculator here, 27 plus 273, we get 300 degrees Kelvin. So that's our T1. 300 degrees Kelvin, okay? So now we're solving for V2, so we don't know what that's gonna be. Now P2 and T2 are in the terms BTPS. So in order to find the volume in the patient's lung, one must correct the machine to body temperature pressure standard with a pressure reading of 744. So the first thing we can take out of there is, um, body temperature pressure standard, or the S actually stands for something called saturated. So saturated means when there is water involved and in, in the body temperature, there's always water involved. Okay, we always naturally through our nose, we saturate the gas that we breathe in. So body temperature, we'll start with T2 then. Body temperature in Celsius we've learned is 37 degrees. So so 37 plus 273, and just doing these equations quite a bit and seeing that 27 plus 273 is 300, we can add 10 more degrees to that, and it's 310 Kelvin. Now this pressure too, it says with the pressure reading of 744, so they must have just, the respiratory therapist must have just looked right at the body box barometer and said, okay, it's 744. However, we did say that it's BTPS, which means body temperature pressure standard saturated. That means that we do have to take into account that there is um, extra pressure being exerted by water. So that is the table in your book. It's on page 190, and it says that when the temperature is 37 degrees, the water vapor pressure is 47. So this is not something you would memorize. You would get this table if you were given an equation. So you would get the table um, or, or given the water, water vapor pressure according um, to that temperature and that exact table. So now because this pressure is saturated, we have to separate or subtract water vapor pressure. So now, our P2 is this 744 minus 47, which is the water vapor pressure at 37 degrees saturated. So P2 then is 697 millimeters of mercury. So now we're gonna take this, all these numbers, and put them into this equation. So this is the steps that can get a little bit challenging, but if you just stay very organized and write down what your variables are, and then plug and chug into this equation, you should get the right answer. So let's look at it. P1, 759, times V1, 1050, times T2, times 310, divided by 
T1 at 300, and P2, which is our 697. Okay, so now we have a new volume. And so the answer to V2 here is 1,180, what is that? 1.5, so we're gonna say two. We're just gonna round up to the nearest whole number here because significantly that's what we're given. We're not given any decimal places and that's in milliliters. So therefore the volume went up to 1,182 milliliters. Okay, so that's our V2. And that's technically what our, um, our, what our body box machines do. They already have this uh, calculated in. So as the respiratory therapist, you're gonna get the patient in there, you're gonna look at the barometer and, and put that into the machine and then it will do the calculating for you. So we're gonna do one more. The volume in the body box is 950 milliliters at 20 Celsius dry gas exerting a pressure of 759. So this condition uh, is atm atmospheric temperature pressure dry. So all that's given, meaning you don't have to correct the pressure because it is dry. In order to find the volume in the patient's lung, one must correct the machine to BTPS, and once again, your conditions are given there, with the pressure reading of 747. So what's your V2? We're gonna use the same combined gas law. P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. Now we're gonna put in all of our variables so we don't get ourselves confused. We're gonna solve for V2. Okay, so let's put in all of our equations. So, or our variables, excuse me. So the first one is V1 at 950 milliliters. P1 says 759 millimeters of mercury, and we don't have to subtract anything because it's dry gas. There's no water vapor pressure, okay? And then the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. So 20 plus 273 is 293 Kelvin. So now V2 is what we're solving for. P2 now, it said at 747 millimeters of mercury, but it's body temperature pressure saturated. So when it's saturated, we have to take out that extra water vapor pressure. So it gives it to us right there, minus 47, because that is the, uh, uh, the water pressure at 37 degrees. Okay, so now 700 is our new P2. And we said T2 is BT, that stands for body temperature, and it's given 37 degrees Celsius plus 273 is 310 Kelvin. Okay, so once again, we're going to solve for V2. So we have to multiply each side by T2 and divide each side by P2. So now we're going to do our plugging and chugging again. So we have uh, 50 times 759 times T2. So we have to come over here, divided by our T1, which is down here, and then our P2, which is that 700. Okay, so now our V2, when we plugged in our numbers, our new volume in our lungs is 1,089.8. Oh, so we have to go up. So we'll say it like this, for 1090 milliliters. So this is our V2. I hope this makes sense. In addition to this, I do have another video that I have posted under your sample problems. So I have done this again. So if you wanna get more practice on this, check out that video that is posted in Schoology as well.